The Tennessee Titans desperately need an offensive tackle in the NFL draft, and there are some great options available. I'm going to break them all down on today's film breakdown from Tic Tac Titans. Titans fans, welcome in to another film breakdown from Tic Tac Titans. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, host of the Locked On Titans podcast. I've covered the Tennessee Titans for Sports Illustrated and USA Today, a certified film junkie breaking down the X's and O's with you guys all year long. Today, we are going to dive into the top four offensive tackles in the NFL draft, Joe O. Ulu Fashionu, J.C. Latham, and Talisa Fuanga. I'm going to break down what they do well, how they can help the Tennessee Titans, and how their styles and their style of play are different from person to person. We got two real athletes in Ul and Fashionu. We got two guys who win with power and strength in Latham and Fuanga. Very excited to dive into two pass protection plays and two running plays for each guy. And we'll talk mostly about their strengths and what they do well, but also within that, talk about some things that they need to clean up at the next level. Make sure that you hit subscribe. I have a ton of content coming your guys' way here on the channel. Going to be breaking down the draft prospects for the next few weeks, deep diving into the players who the Titans do draft. Going to have a ton of player profiles throughout the summer. And once we get into the regular season, I'm going to have film content for you every single day. So again, welcome to Tic Tac Titans. Let's step into the film room. First play of Joe Alt is against Ohio State. You have Joe Alt right here playing left tackle. Ohio State, you look at the fashion new tape, you look at the alt tape, it's definitely the biggest struggles, but obviously Ohio State, one of the best programs in college football. Shout out, go Bucks! But I want to showcase just how Joe Alt wins and quite honestly you see this all over the tape so this is a great example of what he can give you he's got incredibly long arms and great feet for a guy his size so watch he gets a good set he's able to meet the rusher out there so quickness with his feet at six foot eight and a half and then he just uses his arms and his feet to win so keeping the defensive lineman off of his body he's got longer arms than the edge rusher so he's able to win this competition keeps him at bay and moves his feet watch how he's able to move his feet to constantly stay with the path of the edge rusher and once he gets to a spot you're locked up he's got long arms on you there's nothing that you can do he's found his base with his feet and we're going to see an even better look at it when we slow things down want to go into slow motion for some of this offensive line stuff because it's so technical so coming out boom hands on again the long arms no matter what in any situation the man who gets his hands first has a great advantage in the rep and Joe Alt's arm length and his general length is going to allow him to do that now he does have some struggles at time with waist bending because he wants to get his arms on you and his hands on you as quick as possible so he'll have a tendency at times to kind of lean forward and that's where he can get into trouble but when he does it right he keeps his base solid right here he's got a good foundation and good balance good center of gravity and then he uses his arms to keep the defensive lineman and the edge rusher off his body you can't get into his chest you can't push him backwards to make him lose his balance now we're talking about the arms but look at the feet here that's what we really want to focus on because a guy at six foot eight and a half should not be as athletic as Joe all is but his background as a quarterback and his background as a tight end allows him to have kind of unreal feet and athleticism slide he's a little off balance right here look your feet should never be crossed but he's able to boom get that second foot back and then he drops that front foot once he gets this settled he drops this this foot right here back to make sure that he's on balance and uh, good center grip. Bam! There it is. And now he's got you. Long arms, great feet. That's how Joe Alt wins, and we see it on this rep right here. Continuing forward, we got another rep right here to look at where Joe Alt uses a great long arm, and this time he's not able to get both hands on. This is one thing with Joe Alt that I do want to see improve at the next level. Consistently on his tape, he is a two-hand striker, so that means he is using both his hands at the same time and using them together as one. In the NFL, you're going to have to learn to use your hands independently, one at a time. Use this hand to do this. Use the other hand to do that. Sometimes one hand gets beat with a chop down from the defensive lineman, and you got to be able to use that other hand. So I want to show how he's able to use one long arm here 
to actually get it done. He's hand fighting, hand fighting first. Great feet, center of balance. But right here, really, that number nine is able to knock that outside hand, the hand to the top of the screen. He's not really able to do exactly what you want, but he's using this inside arm that we see right here and constantly controlling the defensive lineman. So with his arm length, and if he learns to use independent hands, which is something that can be taught, Bill Callahan looking at you, this would be a great thing for Joe Alt to show more of as he gets into the pros, and I think that he can. Again, watch on the outside, that outside arm. Boom, it's kind of off. He's not able to get it there by the time the defensive lineman gets into his chest. And right here, he's not necessarily winning, but he's able to slide those feet back and use that front long arm to get into the defender's chest and maintain control. Look, you're beat. You are beat right here. He's got his feet behind him, good center of gravity, long arm on you, and there's, there's just nothing that the defensive lineman can do. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Now, we're going to look at some run blocking reps for all of these offensive tackles as well. And you have Joe Alt right here, okay? And he's playing a, a jumbo tight end. There's an, uh, an off-balance line. You have the tight end over here in the left tackle position, and they have Joe Alt over here. I do want to point out to you, number 11 right here is Peyton Wilson, who is going to be a top 50 pick in the NFL draft, maybe the best off-ball linebacker in the entire draft. Look at Joe Alt get to the... Bam! Drives him out of the way. That's a top 50 pick, and Joe Alt is able to get to him. Now, what I want to do again is focus in here on the slow motion. So this looks like a simple down block, all right? Joe Alt is just going to come in here and execute a down block on the linebacker. But let me just say this. When you watch tape of less talented offensive linemen, it is difficult for offensive tackles this size and especially this height to be able to hit their target at the second level. This linebacker, Peyton Wilson, is faster than Joe Alt, but Alt has such good athleticism that he's able to identify his target. And now a lot of linebackers are so fast that they're going to get through that hole before the block can actually get there, okay? But Alt is able to identify his target and not miss. This is accuracy and good athleticism. Boom. And this opens up a huge hole. I mean, Wilson is, is going to make this play. That's a huge hole. And it turns into a touchdown for Notre Dame. Excellent down block by Joe Alt showing athleticism and hitting his target. Here, we're going to see a double team and an absolute pancake. I mean, this is a double team right here between the guard and and then Joe Alt at left tackle. And then Alt, once he gets his hands on number nine, is going to drive him all the way across the formation. And again, this is a down block. You should double team. And now drive him. Drive him down. Drive him down. Drive him down. And look at this. Alt. Put him on the ground. Pancake, baby. Touchdown. That's the type of stuff I want to see for the Tennessee Titans on Sundays. The Titans are going to be using double teams. Now, this is an inside zone run. So this is exactly what the Titans are going to be running out of shotgun. You're going to have a couple double teams on the offensive line. One of the offensive linemen in the double team is going to climb to the second level. And then the other guy is going to be responsible one-on-one. -on -one. Do you know how many times I saw last year a Tennessee Titans double team where after the, first, the second offensive lineman left to climb to the second level, the initial guy who was on the double team man lost. Not the case here with Joe Alt, who is able to drive his man across the formation, and that gives the running back somewhere to go. Boom. Drops him. Absolutely excellent from Joe Alt using his length, using his athleticism, and he drives and finishes in the run game. He's not just an athlete. All right, so now we're going to look at Penn State offensive tackle Olu Fashanu, and Fashanu doesn't have the length or the big hands of Joe Alt, but he is a guy who has insane feet. We talked about Joe Alt's length, the length of his arms and his ability to use his height and his length and leverage that into wins. Olu Fashion who wins entirely with his feet. He's got incredibly nimble feet. He is a dancing bear out there. And in the four offensive tackles that we're going to look at, Alt and, F and Fashionu are guys who win with athleticism, okay? And then you look at the two guys we're going to look at later when we look at Latham and Fuwanga. Those are guys who win with raw power. So just watch the feet of Olu Fashionu here. He's going to be taking on 
the edge rusher right here. Just one-on-one -on -one pass pro, folks. And this is what it's all about. And Fashionu maybe has more upside and more potential than Joe Alt because if he can clean up his hands, his feet are just unreal where Alt is more of a guy who's going to be like a Jake Matthews, a Taylor Lewan. For example, Fashionu is a guy who could maybe be like a, a, a Laramie Tunsil or, um, a, you know, a more athletic Trent Brown could maybe even be uh, a comparison there. But watch him move his feet here. It's just boom. Kick slides out, has great pocket range. Even if he's got a speed edge rusher, he's going to be able to meet him at the point because he's got great feet and is able to boom. Did you see his feet knock back there? how he dropped his feet. We're going to see it again in the slow motion view, but the way he's able to move his feet even while he's in contact and he's engaged, it's incredible. It really is. So right here, he's a little over uh, above his skis. I would like to see him with a little bit more forward lean here because um, he, boom, right there. See, he's driven back. Watch his feet right here. Watch how they kick backwards and allow him to establish new leverage and catch his balance. Bang! Did you see that? That is for a man that size, six foot six, 313 pounds. Just such nimble feet. If he's able to improve his power and his punch and get his hands in a better situation and actually latch on to guys and not let go, Olu Fashionu has a chance to be one of the best offensive tackles in the NFL. So again, with Ol and Fashionu, they are guys who are winning with athleticism. Now, I'll be honest with you, Fashionu struggles in the run game. No doubt about it. Absolutely struggles. And I thought he struggled mightily in pass protection against Ohio State, which is going to be the most difficult matchup of pass rushers that Fashanu faced in college. Play number two here in pass protection for Fashanu. Just, again, excellent feet. And he does a good job because his hands aren't perfect here. All right, able to get out there. Underneath, he's got one arm. Really, one arm, this, this front side arm that's closest to us. Right here, he's got that inside latching. All right, but his feet here, able to stay nimble. Slide, slide. He tries to break, not having it. Holds on, gives his quarterback a lane to run and puts his guy on the ground. It, it's just a really excellent rep, and it showcases how Fashanu is going to win. Fashanu, Fashanu, changing it up. He's not a guy with long, long arms like Joe Alt, who's trying to keep the guy off his body. He needs to improve with his upper body again, his hands. But his feet, kick, slide, kick, slide. Gets his feet in the dirt. Gets good balance. Is able to move those feet to a comfortable position. Guy never really has a chance to win. Stays on top. And this is what we want to see from Fashionu more in the NFL. He latches on his hands here. And he doesn't let go. And he finishes the block. All right. He lets go of his hands too much. He isn't finishing his reps. Especially in the run game. So those are improvements that you want to see. But the athleticism is there. Speaking of the run game with Olu Fashionu. He does a really good job here of being able to move his man out. And this is a front side, just, just kick out. This is, we saw Taylor Lewan make a living off this in the Titans zone scheme. So a lot of time in zone, you're going to have your interior trio in a zone run game. You're going to have your interior trio who are really doing the brunt of the work. Your front side offensive tackle is probably just going to be responsible for setting the edge and setting a wall and making sure that his body is in between the edge rusher. Taylor Lewan did this so much for the Tennessee Titans during his heyday. And Fashanu has the feet and the athleticism and the size to be able to do that. Now again, when he gets his hands on the defender, you'd like to see him keep that latched and keep his hands on him and finish the drive. Far too often, the defender is able to get off of him like here. He kind of gets off of him. You see that? He's able to kind of escape. But the feet of Fashanu to ride with the defender... He has the athleticism to counter that, to recover from that, and continue driving him and open up a hole for his running back. So, to me, this rep kind of shows you the good and the bad. I'm not really focusing on the bad here. I want to show you what these guys can do. This is athleticism, positional, be in the way. The guy gets out of the grip of Fashanu, uh, Fashanu and starts to work to the inside, but the feet move, the feet move, the feet move, and he's able to drive him inside and still win the rep ultimately and give his running back somewhere to go. So while I'm focusing on the good stuff and what these guys can do for the Titans, you see flashes at times in these reps of, oh, I could see how he could get himself into trouble there and that lack strength in his hands. And again, Fashionu has eight and a half inch hands. We're talking historically small hands and that's part of the concern, but you see the reasons why people are so high on him as well. Here, this is great feet. Look how on the snap, 
He's able to slide his feet to the inside to get position and cross the face of the defensive lineman. That takes elite athleticism, okay, from an offensive lineman. He's able to do it and then twist him and turn him and drive him. And this is a pretty good, pretty good rep. But again, he doesn't keep his hands on him and the defender is able to get off. But watch him kick his feet inside here right on the snap. The way he swivels his hips and kicks his feet inside to get leverage on this defensive lineman so that he's able to force him out this way and again you would like to see him keep his hands on him keep that grip locked and then drive the defender is able to get out of the situation but Pashanu again Fashanu is able to drive his feet good boom and look at him feet back back on you continuing to open up a hole defender slides off a little bit there but again you want to see better grip strike better finish but that athleticism and those feet especially in pass protection Fashion who is an elite pass protector, and you could see why on the tape. All right, folks, it is time to look at the road grading maulers. And we got to start with JC Latham. And look, Latham is a guy who I was low on a couple of weeks ago. Dove more into the tape, dove more into the some of the scouting reports that you see, and J.C. Latham has climbed to be my OT2. Uh, Fashionu is a guy who I really, really like, but some of the concerns with the hands and things like that, I have kind of pivoted here. Joe Alt, definitely number one for me, far and away, safest pick. Best offensive tackle in the class, but Latham just really, really impressed me with what he put on tape. He has the most powerful hands I have seen since I started like watching and scouting college football players. Okay, it's just absolutely insane what J.C. Latham is able to do to these guys once he gets his hands on them. And we're going to see it here in this initial rep. And remember when I talked about Joe Alt doing two-handed stabs? Alt doesn't use his hands independently quite as well as some other guys. But one guy who does use his hands very well independently is J.C. Latham. So what he does here is he kind of fakes his punch with his inside hand. This hand right here, he kind of fakes it. At first, like he's going to throw it at the defensive lineman. And what it's going to do is it's going to make the defensive lineman kind of tilt this way. Because he's like, all right, you're throwing that inside hand. If I can get to it, maybe I can get inside of you. But then Latham doesn't throw the inside hand at first. And then after the defensive lineman gets into his chest, then he throws that outside hand and he has it on him. So he kind of kind of toys with him. But look, this is what I mean with independent hands. So you got one hand right here, the outside hand is in the defender's chest. Great balance, great center of gravity right here. And then Latham is gonna use his front side hand that we're looking at right here to knock down right there. So he's using one hand as a long arm his outside hand is a long arm in the chest of the defender to hold serve with him and then using his inside hand right here to kind of help himself in the battle. So he's already won with the outside hand and he's using that inside hand. Watch, he pushes it off. Did you see him push off right there? So he's got one hand on him constantly latched on and not letting go. And then he's using his other hand to kind of help him out rather than doing two hands at the same time collectively tied together like we saw with Joe Alt. So the ability to use independent hands and just the strength and grip that Latham has, incredible, not even close to the quarterback. I, I, like, again, watch him kind of kind of faint this boop, right there. Now he's on the outside, winning with the inside hand, pushes up, good anchor, strong hands, independent hands. J.C. Latham really impressed him. And we're going to see that on steroids here. You think that the faint was maybe not super pronounced? Watch this from Latham. Boom. Watch him, watch him drop those hands and knock the hands down. And what, So Latham's hands are outside, all right? And he knocks down the hands of the rusher and then reestablishes hands in the chest. And just look at that. I mean, it's like controlling a baby. Again, watch, it, watch him win this hand battle. Hands are outside. Defender is in his chest. All right. Now he's going to swipe down because Latham's hands are so strong and so powerful. And he's got such thick arms and thick legs. He's going to swipe down on the hands of the defender. And then he's going to reestablish his hands and be quicker with his hands and get inside the chest of the defender. And it is over. If you watch the tape, 
There is nobody else in this draft class who kills a rush with his hands quicker than J.C. Latham. Like, it, it, it's just so impressive. Swipe down. Reestablish inside. Now I'm back inside and I'm winning. And you're done. You're Look at the grip strength. Where I talked about Fashionu, where he gets hands on guys, but he doesn't control them all the way. Once Latham gets his hands on you, buddy, you're done. I mean, it's just so impressive, man. It, I was just wrong. I was wrong. And in the run game, look, Alt is good in the run game, but pass protection is his calling card. Fashionu, not good in the run game, but just elite ability in pass protection. Latham, good ability in pass protection. You worry how he'll deal with the speediest threats in the NFL on the edge, but in the run game, watch him maul this Georgia defender. And look, we're showing Texas, Georgia, SEC, like some of the best defensive lines. We're going to have J.C. Latham right here at right tackle. And what he's going to do is he's just got a down block on this defensive lineman. Of Georgia. And my Lord, the eclipse just happened. J.C. Latham is the eclipse. He blocks out the sun. Hands, hands on him. Drive him. Boom. Into the dirt. I mean, like... Alt and Fashionu are athletes. This is why I talk about being a road-grading offensive tackle. Latham has way more power than both of those guys. And depending on what the Titans are looking for, Latham could be more up their alley. Now, what I will say is, Latham doesn't have a ton of experience with zone runs. He's a guy who's been in more of a gap run scheme. And we're seeing a gap run here where it's down blocks and then you got backside pullers coming across to the front side of the run. This isn't stuff that we've seen Bill Callahan's offenses in Cleveland do a ton. And Bill Callahan is considered one of the best zone run coaches in the NFL. Now, Brian Callahan in Cincinnati developed more of a multiple run scheme with zone runs and with gap runs. So, depending on what the Titans are looking for more, could depend on which offensive lineman they take. But just hands-on, again, the grip strength, the raw power, the core power, it's absolutely outrageous. Opens a hole for the runner. Big game. And this one is just one-on-one -on -one amazing. So, you, you can see Latham over here. He's tucked in behind number 45, and he's just got a one-on-one -on -one matchup with this defensive lineman and the control that he has here to open up this running lane. Again, Texas, Georgia, Michigan. Like, Latham is having dominant reps against the best defenses and best defensive lines in college football. So, look, low man wins, folks. Low man wins. J.C. Latham is six foot five. Look how low he is. Look how low his butt is. No ditty, all right? Look how low it is. I mean, for a man that big to be that low, just absolutely impressive. Look at that. Look at that grip strength. Look at those hands inside the shoulder pads, in the chest plate, not holding, and just drives his man over full control, puts him, puts his knees on the ground, stays on him too. Again, we talked about Fashionu losing his grip, losing his latch. Not J.C. Latham. His hands are on you. They ain't coming off. Driving his man still. And now watch him celebrate the run. Yeah, a football kid. I mean, dominant, dominant one-on-one -on -one rep. Low, low, keep that butt down. Low man wins, hands in the chest, grip strength, put him on the ground. Totally spun the defensive lineman. Totally spun him from where he was to where he is right now, and they run right off his butt. Look at that gap against Michigan, the best defense in college football last year. Driving, finish, nasty, wanting to hurt people, wanting to put his body on people, wanting to crush their souls. This is offensive line play. And we're going to get into another guy right now who maybe isn't the athlete that Latham is, but another guy who's downright nasty, and that's Talise Fuanga from Oregon State. He's playing right tackle right here, number 75. Now, one thing about Fuwanga, some people say that he might need to play guard because you wonder about how he can handle the top-tier athleticism in the NFL. He's just a little bit stiff. Latham is a little bit stiffer than the first two guys that we saw. Fuwanga is just a little bit more stiff than that. Uh, I think if you get him out in a pool, like if he's out pulling, 
on the perimeter. He looked good in his pro days. He looked fluid. But as for his pass sets, you know, I don't know if he's a guy who's going to be able to get way out here to meet an edge rusher. But right here, he does a good job of right away getting his hands on the guy. He doesn't want to play in space. You know, he wants to play in a phone booth. So he gets on his guy really quickly. And look how he knocked down that outside hand. All right? And then gets his hands inside. Again, strong hands from Talisa Fuanga. Excellently strong hands, good core strength. Look at that, one arm, one arm. His second arm is on the side right here. All right, and he's winning one arm because of his power and his strength and his hands and his core. Runs with him once he gets control of him. Easy stuff, easy stuff. Again, against a more athletic player and in the NFL where the edge rushers are not just, watch that swipe down. Such good independent hands. Inside the shoulder pad. Now I'm winning. I have my free hand. I have my free hand. And I'm rolling with you. Love this rep from Talisa Fuwanga. Now, Fuwanga is a guy who... I'm Latham and Fuwanga and Fashionu. I'm not certain I want to take them at number seven overall. But if the Titans do end up trading back a couple of spots, I think all these guys make a ton of sense. At seven, to me, it's Joe Alt. No matter what. That's how I've been the whole draft process. But... Either way. Now, this one, a little bit more athleticism. All right, did you see that fake punch? Did you see that fake outside hand that he did to try to get the defender to commit? And then the defender throws their move, throws the two-handed swipe. But Fuwanga shot that outside hand, and it caused the defender to throw his two-handed swipe. But then Fuwanga says, no, nah, I'm going to come with the inside hand, and I'm going to get that on you. L love... The independent hand usage and the intelligence of playing that. But here is where you see he's a little off balance here. Not a wide base. Feet too close together because the edge rusher is coming with speed. Now he's able to get there and win. But you wonder against more athletic guys. And Fuanga has the tendency to get beat to the inside. Latham, that's something that you see on tape as well. Some of these bigger, stronger guys, powerful guys who maybe aren't the athletes that the first two guys were. They know that. They're like, okay, I got to hurry and get to the outside so I don't get beat to the edge with speed. But when they do that, that leaves them vulnerable to the inside. And you could see how that would maybe be a problem. But, you know, again, look at this fake punch here. Boom. Fake punch with the outside. The defender is thinking, okay, he's going to throw his outside hand, two-handed swipe. Oh, well, I'm winning with my inside hand. Inside hand, inside hand. I'm able to meet you at the top of the of the rush loop. And I won the rep. My quarterback's free to throw the football, complete a pass, and move forward. But Fuanga is really impressive in the run game. Again, you have him right here at right tackle. I think that Latham has a chance to kick over to left tackle. I don't think Fuanga does. I think you need to be a little more athletic to be on the left-hand side. So I would keep Fuanga as a right tackle. But this is front side zone. This is a zone run. Okay, the Titans will be running zone. So this front side on the zone, setting the edge. We talked about this earlier, setting the wall to allow your running back to come through here and pick his hole and turn up field. So great job setting the edge by Talise Fuanga. Now, there it is. And the running back has a cut up lane because look how far Fuanga has driven his man out to the side. That is great Run side zone blocking from an offensive tackle. Positional blocking, set your edge, give your running back somewhere to cut back off of. Just absolutely tremendous. That And and for the Titans, and look, that's Latou. That's going to be a top 20 draft pick in the NFL. And look at him pushing. Now, you would like to see Fuanga stay lower and drive his man. He's a pusher. He likes to just push guys out of the way. And that is something that may not work at the NFL with stronger guys. You want to see like Latham where you lock the hands on and you drive. Fuanga is a pusher. Watch him push that top hand too. You're not getting in my chest. I mean, that's it. You know, it's not perfect. But again, as a zone team, you could see why that would be exciting. And here, this is just power. All right. And Oregon State knows how good Fuanga is. So you're going to see a double team here on this defensive lineman. But then Fuwanga is going to climb off of the double team to the second level and drive the man out of the way, and it's going to open up a crease for the running back to score a touchdown. This is, again, zone running stuff. This is what the Titans are going to be doing within their offense. 
gets to the linebacker and drives him out of the way. Big hole for the running back to get through. I mean, look at the size of that hole on the goal line. Bam, Fuanga hits right there on the combo and knocks that guy out of the hole. His hips are turning. That allows his teammate to handle that and win that rep. And then he gets to the linebacker and just drives him out of the way. Open hole, touchdown. So excellent stuff from Talise Fuwanga. Again, Joe Alt, Olu Fashionu, winning with athleticism. Latham, Fuanga, winning with power. I think all four of those guys could be an option for the Titans on day one of the NFL draft, depending whether they stick and pick at seven or if they drop back a couple of spots. All right, guys, that is going to do it for our breakdown of the top offensive tackles in the NFL draft. I think all four of those guys could be a great fit for the Tennessee Titans, depending on where they pick. Do want to remind you guys on Tuesday night's Tic Tac Titan or Tuesday night's Locked On Titans episode. I'm going to be doing a full preview of the offensive tackle position. I'm not only going to talk about the top guys in the draft. I'm going to talk about the day two options, talk about the late round options. We're going to go over 15 to 20 different offensive tackles that pair well with this film breakdown. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, get subscribed, stay subscribed. I'm going to be breaking down film of the Tennessee Titans all year long for free here on the channel. Check out the Tic Tac Titans merch down below in the description if you guys want to get a hold of any of that. But that is going to do it for today's Tic Tac Titans film breakdown. Everybody enjoy out there and tighten up.